Okay, so it's my very big pleasure to announce the first speaker of our afternoon session. Um, Andrea Galasso from Taipei will tell us about triplets operators on CR manifolds and group actions. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. This is a joint work with Chinyu Shao, and the title is Toplitz Operators on CR Manifolds and Group Actions. I would like to start with the rough idea of the top. We have the classical picture. So this means that we have the generalization of the cotangent bundle of, uh, of the configuration space in classical mechanics, which is a symplectic manifold. And uh, we have the quantum, quantum picture. So this means that we want to consider a Hilbert space and unitary operators acting on the Hilbert space. And there's a canonical way to associate for each smooth function on the symplectic manifold M, an operator acting on the Hilbert space of the quantization. And we would like to understand how the algebra, the sister algebra of operator is related to the algebra of smooth function on the symplectic manifold M, which is a Poisson algebra. And in the presence of classical symmetries, so this means um, when we consider an action of a Lie group on the symplectic manifold, we have a representation under a suitable hypothesis of the Lie group on the quantization. And we would like to understand how the representation and so gene variant operators are related to gene variant function on the symplectic manifold M. So now I would like to be more precise. We would like to generalize uh, quantization of Keller and manifold. We want to consider a, a compact Keller manifold. Suppose that omega defines an integral cohomology class. Then uh, we know that there exists a complex line bundle with the Hermitian structure and a unique holomorphic and compatible connection, NABLA, such that the curvature of NABLA is equal to minus to I omega. This condition is also called uh, Dirac condition. And this procedure, we know that it is true more general for any symplectic manifold. And uh, in particular, for the case of Keller manifold, the integrality condition for the cohomology class of omega implies that the Keller manifold is a complex projective manifold by the Kodair embedding theorem. Because uh, in this case, this means that the line bundle uh, is an ample line bundle. We want to consider uh, quantization with complex polarization. So the Hilbert space of quantization is just given by the direct sum over K of the space of holomorphic section of the K power of the bundle. And the Hilbert product is given by taking the in integration over M of the um, uh, Hermitian uh, structure on the K tensor power of the line bundle. Here, the volume form is uh, the one induced by the symplectic form. Now, since we want to generalize this picture, I need to explain some um, identification. So I need to define the circle bundle inside the dual of the line one. Uh, the circle bundle is the boundary of the disk bundle, and the disk bundle is a strictly pseudo-convex domain. Just to fix the idea, for the case of the complex projective space of complex dimension D, we have the Fubini study form. The Fubini study form defines an integral cohomology class, and the quantized, quantized line bundle in this setting is just the dual of the tautological one. So the circle bundle is just given by the Hope vibration. So X in this case is just the 2D plus one dimensional sphere. Now there's a well-defined operator, the del bar B operator. On the disk bundle, we have the del bar operator. We can take the restriction to the boundary, which is um, X. And we can define the hardy space, which is a closed space of L to X. The hardy space is given by the intersection between the kernel of the del bar B operator and the space of square integrable function on X. We also have, uh, 
an S1 action on X. And since the X1 action commutes uh, uh, with the del bar B operator, we have uh, an action. Uh, so uh, the S1 action preserves the, the hardy space. And so we have uh, the composition of the hardy space into isotypes. Uh, as you can see, the first uh, um, equality is just a definition of the action on a, on a function. And the sequ second equality is just uh, um, the definition uh, of the k Fourier component of the ID space. And this is the identification I was talking about. The space of holomorphic section of the k power of the bundle can be identified with the k Fourier component of the Hardy space. And I uh, should also remark that these spaces, of, of course, are finite dimensional. And uh, we can consider the, the Zigo projector, which is given uh, since Hx is a closed space of L2x, it is well defined and it is given simply by the projector onto the, uh, the Hardy space. So we can define topless operators. So instead of saying a smooth function on the Keller manifold M, I want to say um, S1 invariant function on the circle bundle. And uh, this is because uh, I want to emphasize that later we want to generalize this picture for CR manifold. So given a smooth function on the Keller manifold M, we can, we can define the toplitz operator just by taking the composition with the Zico kernel multiplication by F and Zico kernel again. And also we can uh, consider the k Fourier components of toplitz operator. So the study as k goes to infinity of these, toplet, of these operators, um, it is important uh, in, in semi-classical analysis. And now I would like to, um, uh, so this is a theorem which is due to Schlick and Meyer and it is based on a previous result or, of Bordermann, Meinrenken and Schlick and Meyer. Uh, there exists uh, a unique uh, formal star product, which is called uh, Berezin Toplitz star product, uh, such that this inequality here is satisfied. So this means that for each smooth function for Fg on the Keller manifold M, and for every n natural number, there exists a constant such that this inequality is satisfied. So in some sense, we would like to study the composition of Toplitz operator, and uh, we want to study. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, we want to study the asymptotic as k goes to infinity of the distributional kernel of the composition, and we want to um, choose uh, uh, the CJ in such a way that this inequality is satisfied. Now the idea is that we want to define. We want to generalize this theorem in the general setting of CR manifold, because uh, we will see later that the circle bundle of a Keller manifold is a very special kind of, uh, of, of, of CR manifold. So let me briefly recall the definitions. Uh, a CR manifold is just a 2n plus 1 dimensional manifold. We want to consider compact and orientable CR manifold. T10x is just a subbundle of the complexified tangent bundle. The rank of this subbundle is equal to n. And if you take the intersection between T10 and uh, the complex conjugate of T10, uh, this is trivial. And also the second condition is just the um, integrability condition in the sense of Frobenius. We can define uh, the horizontal bundle in such a way that the complexified horizontal bundle is just uh, the direct sum of the, hand, the, of the holomorphic pa part plus the high holomorphic part. And uh, since the manifold is orientable, one can always define a contact form, which is a one form. And uh, it is defined in such a way that the kernel of this one form is just given by the horizontal bundle. There's also a very important object in CR geometry, in CR geometry which is called the Levy form. For each uh, uh, u v in T10x, we can define uh, uh, the Levy form in this way. 
just by considering the differential, the exterior differential of the contact form. And we will always assume that this uh, form is non-degenerate. So the number of positive eigenvalues plus the number of negative eigenvalues is equal to n. So 2n plus 1 is the dimension of the CR manifold. In this general setting, we want, we want to define the del bar B operator. And uh, we, want to do, uh, we want to define this operator not just for functions, but for zero Q forms. So we have to fix an Hermitian metric on the complexified tangent bundle in such a way that uh, T01 in per is perpendicular to, D to T10. Uh, uh, this uh, uh, metric induces a metric on the space of uh, Q forms, complex valued Q forms. And so we have a well-defined projector onto the zero Q components. And then we can give the definition of the bar B operator, which is just the composition of the projector onto the zero Q plus one component with the exterior differential. In this setting, one can also define uh, the corresponding Laplacian, which is called the cone Laplacian. And it is, it is just given by uh, considering the, um, uh, the self-adjoint, uh, um, um, uh, just, just by considering del bar B, del bar B star plus del bar B star del bar B. And since X is also a contact manifold, we can define the rib vector field. The rib vector field is defined in such a way that uh, um, R, is um, uh, perpendicular to the horizontal bundle. And uh, for later use, we need to define uh, the, this operator, delta B, which is, just, uh, which, which, which is just the sum of the cone Laplacian plus uh, um, uh, R star R. And uh, we can define a Zico projector for the zero Q form. Uh, when I write L2 zero Q, I just means zero Q forms with L2 coefficients. We can define this, oh, uh, the Zigo kernel for zero Q form. So if uh, uh, L, uh, the cone Laplacian has L2 closed range, then uh, um, the Zigo kernel for functions uh, was studied uh, by uh, Boutet de Montbel and Jostrand. And later, this was generalized by Chinyu Shao for the case of zero Q forms. So uh, this operator um, can be written as a sum of S minus plus S plus, where S plus is smoothing. So this means uh, up to smoothing contribution. So S plus is smoothing if Q is not equal to N plus, and S minus is smoothing if Q is not equal to N minus. Um, and the wave front set of S plus minus is, is defined in this way. So if you uh, consider S plus, S plus, you have to consider sigma plus. And so this means that you have to take lambda greater than zero. I just want to explain um, if I can use, okay. So with an example, in the case, uh, um, in the special case of uh, the circle bundle X of a symplectic manifold, say that M omega is a symplectic manifold and we have a compatible complex structure. But uh, now say omega is not positive anymore. So in this case, the Levy form on X, um, the eigenvalues, so it is non-degenerate because omega is, uh, is non-degenerate. So we have N plus plus N minus, the number of uh, positive eigenvalues and the number of negative eigenvalues. Then suppose that um, say, N, uh, N uh, um, plus N minus is not equal to zero. So in this case, 
S0 is smoothing. So this means that when you consider the k Fourier component of the Zico kernel, this has a rapidly decreasing asymptotic as k goes to infinity. So because the, and, and these, uh, so it makes sense to consider the more general case of zero Q form in this setting. Let me see if I can go to the next slide. Maybe I have to wait a little bit. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I have to. Erase. Maybe now I can go. Okay. I can move on. Okay. And also we can consider the contact vector field, which is given, which is a unique, uh, uniquely defined by these two conditions. So if we take the contraction uh, with respect to omega zero, we get uh, U. And if, if we take the contraction with respect to the differential of omega zero, omega zero is the contact form. We have um, this uh, is a smooth function. Omega zero is a one form minus the differential of U. And we have also to consider for later use the transversal Poisson bracket. Now we will see later that toplitz operators in this setting are a very special kind of operators. And uh, in order to be precise, we need, we need to give this definition. Consider an operator H from the space of zero Q form onto the space of zero Q form. Suppose that this operator is a continuous operator. So by the Schwarz integral, uh, by, the, by the Schwarz theorem, we can de define the, um, the Schwarz kernel of the operator. And we say that H is a complex Fourier integral operator of Zigo type of order K. If locally, uh, this operator has the same microlocal property of the Zigo kernel. So H can be written up to smoothing contribution uh, as H minus plus H, H plus. And the distributional kernel of H plus and minus can be written in this way. Um, this is an oscillatory integral. And uh, phi plus minus is just uh, the complex phase function of the Zico kernel. Instead, uh, A plus minus is a um, classical symbol in the sense of Ormander of degree K. And uh, it is defined in such a way the oscillatory integral makes sense uh, in the sense of distribution. So far, we were talking about uh, uh, two generalizations. So instead of considering circle bundle of a Keller manifold, um, we are considering CR manifold. And instead of considering just functions, we want to consider zero Q form. But there's also uh, another generalization, which is natural to consider in this setting. And for functions, uh, this was done in a monograph by, uh, written by uh, Butete, Mobel, and Kilemin. And they study uh, toplitz operators defined uh, with a, a pseudo differential operator. So locally, a pseudo, a pseudo can be written uh, in this way. We want to consider pseudo differential operator with scalar um, symbol. So this means that the full symbol, uh, sigma p, is just a smooth uh, function on the cotangent bundle. And then we can give this definition of uh, toplitz operators. Um, so the toplitz operator, it is given by the composition of the Zigo projector for the zero Q form. Um, then we have a pseudo, and then uh, we have uh, the zero, uh, the Zigo projector for the Zigo for the zero Q form again. And now one can try to study these operators again. One can study the algebra of these operators, and uh, by the using by uh, by using uh, the uh, the stationary phase formula of Melin and Jostrand, one can see that this toplitz operator is uh, um, an operator of Zigo type of degree n plus l, and can be written uh, um, in this way. And also we uh, computed uh, 
the leading term of, uh, of the symbol. But I didn't write it because it's a little bit too technical. So, and we also studied uh, the commutator of top -list operators and uh, uh, the composition. Now I want to, uh, to explain, um, uh, so the, if uh, we consider pseudo differential operator, we have a deformation uh, of this algebra. So uh, this is the algebra of homogeneous function on sigma, which is given by S hat. Um, so as you can see, uh, it is defined by using the leading symbol of the operator that I defined before. So this uh, uh, delta B is just given by the sum of the cone Laplacian plus R, R star R. And um, we can define transversal Poisson bracket for, uh, for um, so given A in, uh, in S hat K and B in S hat L, we can define Poisson bracket in this way. So the Poisson bracket of A and B uh, is by definition given um, by taking the transversal Poisson bracket for functions a hat minus and B hat, hat minus are both functions and they are defined in this way. So with this uh, uh, definition, we have a theorem. So assume for simplicity that Q is equal to N minus, but Q is not equal to N plus. Consider A in S hat L and B in S hat K, so for each n, we can give uh, we can give an, uh, we can give a sort of analog of the of the theorem of Schlickenmeier that I mentioned before. So we can define C J in such a way that when uh, uh, we consider the so the composition of this operator with the uh, the operators T B is an operator of Zygog type of degree n plus l plus k. And we want to take minus this sum here in such a way that the resulting operator is a new operator of Zygog type, but of degree of less degree. So of degree n minus big N minus one plus l plus k. And one can prove that, so uh, this CJ can be used to define uh, a SAR product for the algebra that I defined before. And uh, so what, what does it mean? So one can see that C0 uh, AB is just uh, A dot B and uh, C1 AB minus C1 BA is just the Poisson bracket of A and B. And uh, one can also check that the associativity property holds. Now we would like to recover the star product, uh, the star product for function. And in order to do so, we need some technical definitions. So we have to define this operator R hat, uh, which is a C, uh, which is a operator of Zigo type of degree uh, n plus one. And this is, it is given by this formula. Then we have to define H hat uh, which is uniquely defined by these two conditions. And uh, it is a sort of inverse up to smoothing contribution uh, for the operator R uh, hat. And then with this notation, uh, assume that Q is equal to N minus and Q is not equal to N plus for each uh, uh, FG smooth function on X, we define CJ in this way, in a similar way as before, one can check that C0 of Fg is just uh, um, the, the multiplication between F and G. And again, C1 Fg minus C1 Gf is the transversal Poisson bracket of, or of F and G. But uh, it is not true in general that these, uh, um, uh, so the, the, the star product is, is associative. And uh, if uh, our head commutes uh, with uh, the topless operators, then uh, one can see that um, 
this uh, uh, this star product is associative for the for the algebra of smooth function vanishing under the action of the rib vector field. Now, I would like to, um, to talk about uh, group, Lie group actions. We want to consider locally free action. And this is really important be, be, because a lot of example uh, in, uh, in complex NCR geometry, um, one has to study locally free action. And um, if we consider a, a compact and connected Lie group, suppose that uh, um, the action is via uh, contact homomorphism, and also suppose that the action is uh, holomorphic, then we can define the moment map uh, in this way. So if we take the, pair, the, the pairing between uh, a mu x and uh, xi, where xi is an element in the Lie algebra, we have uh, um, omega 0 uh, xi x, where psi x is the infinitesimal vector field pertaining to psi. Um, so if you want to start, so if you are thinking about the circle uh, bundle of a symplectic manifold of a, uh, with integral cohomology class, then uh, um, it is not true that uh, given an Hamiltonian action, you have, uh, um, you have an action uh, um, uh, on the circle bundle. Uh, but uh, um, under some topological assumption, so I mean, uh, there's always exists uh, an action of the infinitesimal action of the Lie algebra acting by via contact homomorphism on the circle bundle, and it is not true in general that this action can be integrated to an action of the whole group. And um, if the if the group is semi-simple, this is the case, and we have uh, an action uh, which uh, of of this kind. Um, now, suppose that uh, the Hermitian uh, structure is G invariant, we can define uh, an action uh, on uh, zero Q form just by taking the pullback. And uh, we want to consider the G invariant uh, zero Q form. And now in this setting, it is natural to con consider the G invariant Zigo kernel. And one can see so for the case of free action, uh, these, uh, uh, so Huang and Xiao um, have already studied this projector. We just generalized this, uh, this theorem for the locally free case. If Q uh, is not equal to uh, N minus nor N plus, then the G invariant Zico projector for zero Q form uh, is smoothing on X. Um, if we take, suppose that now we are considering uh, um, and a small open set D such that uh, mu inverse zero, mu is the moment map, the contact uh, moment map, mu inverse zero, um, the intersection between mu inverse zero and D is not empty. Then uh, um, the G invariant Zigo kernel can be written up to smoothing contribution as a sum, SG minus plus SG plus. And uh, I didn't write uh, the microlocal expression for SG plus because it is similar, but uh, suppose that um, SG minus, uh, um, suppose that Q is equal to N minus, then uh, uh, we can uh, write down explicitly um, the, the G invariant Zigo kernel. As you can see, uh, we have um, the cardinality of the stabilizer at the point Y. And uh, one can also study, um, one can give uh, in local coordinates an explicit expression for the complex phase function, uh, phi minus, and uh, also the symbol uh, now is um, a symbol of degree n minus uh, uh, d um, over two, where d is the uh, real dimension of the Lie group of type one zero. As I said before, this uh, theorem is a generalization of a previous result of uh, Xiao and Huang. And also uh, using uh, the same, uh, same ideas, one can, uh, uh, one can study uh, toplitz operators just by taking the integral over the, over the group G. So one can study also the algebra of G invariant toplitz operators in this setting. 
And uh, now um, we want to recover uh, the case of the circle bundle. So uh, suppose uh, that we have uh, an S1 uh, locally free transversal action on X. So uh, just to give a motivation, so the circle bundle uh, of a Keller manifold is a very special kind of Sasakian manifold. There are, uh, th th there's a classification and there are uh, three kinds of CR manifold. You can have a, a free, uh, ac free S1 action. And then if you take the quotient, you always uh, obtain a Keller manifold. If you can all, uh, it is also possible that the action is locally free. And then if you have, a, if you take the quotient, you obtain, you, you obtain um, um, uh, a Keller orbifold. And the last case is the case of uh, the action, R action. So uh, suppose that now that we have a locally free S1 action, uh, we take a new inverse zero and we take the quotient with respect to S1. This is an orbifold and we have the projection pi. Mm, so uh, take X um, in a new inverse zero. Suppose that G fixes uh, pi X then uh, just uh, for a moment, we can consider the case of when the action is just the, F, the action of S1 is free. So if uh, G fixes pi X, so pi X is an element in mu inverse zero quotient by S1. So if you take um, the, the element, the corresponding element in mu inverse zero, since uh, G fixes pi X. So this means that there exists an element um, in S1 such that uh, the action of G on X is just given by, um, so the element in S1 acting on X. And uh, when the action is locally free, we have uh, the cardinality of S1, so the stabilizer for the S1 action of the point X elements, um, we can define uh, um, uh, this number of elements for each uh, element G uh, in the stabilizer of pi X. And, down, and now we can study a sort of uh, analog of the um, Kathleen Tian Yao Zeldich asymptotic, asymptotic expansion in this G invariant situation where both the action of, uh, of, the, of the Lie group G and also the action of S1, they are both locally free. And uh, uh, as you can see, when P uh, lies in mu inverse zero, we can consider um, a local neighborhood of a point of the point P and we have local coordinates and we can write explicitly the, the, the asymptotic expansion as M goes to infinity for the G invariant, uh, for the M, M Fourier component of the G invariant Zico kernel for zero Q form in this setting. And we also, um, we also uh, computed the leading term of, um, of, of P. And this result can be so, uh, which point did I so did you see this this is this slide before? Oh, slide sixteen and half of slide seventeen. Okay, perfect. So we can define these spectral subspaces. And then, um, so we can define the CR reduction. So we can suppose that uh, zero is a regular value for the moment map. We can take the quotient, uh, so mu inverse zero quotient by G. Uh, this is a CR manifold, and we can define the we can define the Levy form for uh, the uh, the CR reduction. Uh, the Levy form has Q minus R negative eigenvalues. And uh, now if we consider 
a function, a G invariant function, a smooth function on the CR manifold um, X. Then we have a new function uh, on the on XG because we can just take the restriction to new inverse zero, and then we can take the quotient by the action of G. And then for F, which is a G invariant function, we can define the corresponding G invariant topless operator. And also for F, X, G, we can just define the standard topless operator on the, on the quotient. And we have this theorem if uh, M is sufficiently large, then uh, um, the eigenspace for the G invariant topless operator of the function F. Um, so this space is isomorphic to the eigenspace for the toplitz operator uh, for Q minus R form for the function F X G on the quotient. And I think that I can stop here. Very much. Sorry. Are there any questions for Andrea? Hello. Hello. You can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Thank you very much for this very nice talk. I was wondering in your uh, formulas that you have showed where you have uh, oscillatory integral formulas and you have phases, you said that you could compute explicitly. I was wondering if there is some geometrical data in these uh, phases, for example. Like, you know, uh, um, in the case of uh, uh, quantization of uh, Keller manifolds, for example, you can uh, find in uh, some um, formulas, integral formulas for the star product, you can find fluxes of the Keller two form through uh, a geodesic triangle, for example, uh, as phases or formal phases of the star product uh, integral formula. So I was wondering if, if in your case, these, uh, these objects uh, can be actually described by uh, geometrical differential quantities. Uh, for the G invariant case, um, you, uh, yes, of course you have uh, um, uh, geometric quantities and um, for describing the phase function, uh, it is important to, to know the, um, uh, the contact form of the CR manifold and in the gene variant situation, also uh, the moment map. And uh, as I maybe in this, uh, I can, so for the case of, uh, of the Zigo kernel, even if you don't consider the Kate Fourier component of the Zigo kernel, uh, you can see that the phase function uh, phi minus, so uh, if you take the differential, I didn't say with respect to the, uh, to the second variable and you compute along the diagonal, then you, obta you obtain plus the contact form. And um, if you take uh, the differential with respect to the, uh, to the uh, second, uh, so the first entries, and then you compute along the diagonal, you have minus uh, the contact form. So, um, and also for the G invariant situation, um, so the, the function is G invariant, uh, and, um, and this is basically the geometry inside the, inside the phase function of, uh, of the Zigo projector. I don't what? know if I, was able to. Yeah, partly. Okay, so there is a, a you say that the differential is equal to the contact form, but it means that the function itself should be an integral of, of the contact form on some, on some on some boundary. And I was wondering if there- You mean the, you mean the function that I used to define the star product, right? Yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, so this is, okay. This is a consequence of the stationary phase formula. Uh, because uh, um, uh, maybe I can so like in these uh, in these uh, but even in the in the 
more, uh, so in the case of compact manifold. So you can define in the compact Keller manifold. So like uh, in the theorem of Schlich and Meyer, you can define this CJ by using the stationary phase formula. And uh, it is of course uh, important to know because you have to um, consider the critical point of the phase function. And uh, so in some sense, uh, um, so the, mm -hmm. yes, maybe. Uh, so the, the, the definition of the, of, the, of the phase function is crucial if you want to define this CJ because you want to use the stationary phase formula. And if you want the stationary phase formula, if you want to use the stationary phase formula um, and you want, to you want to define the Hormander operator, um, you need to, to use the, the phase function on the of the oscillatory integral. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So the, the, the basic tool is the stationary phase is the uh, is the stationary phase formula, and with the stationary phase formula, you can define this CJ. All right. Are there any further questions? Does not seem to be the case. So let's thank Andrea again. And we now have the coffee break. I suggest we accept that we have a little bit of a delay and we will continue at 3 p.m. I would like to advertise the coffee breaks. Online we have Zoom breakout rooms and that can be quite nice if you guys can meet